While researching the domestic tariffs available for home charging, I found many utility websites quoted savings of EVs versus petrol equivalents. And it got me to thinking, what is the truth? Well, Dave takes it on, looks at his current electricity tariff and the cost of superchargers and compares that to an equivalent ICE car. Also, to begin with, I'm with EDF. Well, who are they? Well, EDF is a British utility company wholly owned by the French state-owned EDF, Electricité de France. It was established in the UK in 2009 and today offers electricity generation and the sale of natural gas and electricity to homes and businesses throughout the UK. I've been with EDF for four years since buying my first EV, a used Tesla Model S manufactured in 2016. It has an 85 kilowatt hour battery with 82 kilowatt hours available. I also purchased a Tesla home charger rated at 7 kilowatt. Well, because I travel to different parts of the country and film charging sessions with a multitude of charging networks, I drive higher than average miles and I do need to use public chargers regularly. For these, I almost exclusively use Tesla's superchargers off peak as they are by far the cheapest network in the UK. Well, my home tariff looks at first glance to be a bit expensive. Current rates for off-peak electricity are around 8 pence, while I pay 11 pence. Similarly, the standard tariff is around 30p, many offer 29p, and I still pay 39p. So why have I chosen this particular tariff and not changed it? Am I mad? Well, my tariff with EDF offers 10 hours of off-peak electricity each evening from 9pm to 7am weekdays and all day Saturday and Sunday. And there's your first clue. So I've programmed my car to always charge after 9pm and finish before 7am. At the weekend, I can happily override this and charge at any time. Well, this means that my EV home charging is always at 11 pence per kilowatt hour. An important point to know is that charging is not 100% efficient. The average efficiency is typically well, well over 90%. So to be fair in this comparison, when I add one kilowatt hour of electricity to my car, I actually need to buy almost 1.1 kilowatt hours. So for this comparison, I've just simply added 10% to all the charging prices per kilowatt hour to compensate. Well, my on-car display shows me that over the last 17,554 miles, I was averaging just a tiny fraction over 3 miles per kilowatt hour. I can get much more or much less on specific journeys, but over 17,500 miles, it's an average of 3 miles per kilowatt hour. Well, this, by the way, is way less efficient than the latest Teslas. If I got a new one, they regularly get four miles per kilowatt hour. That's about 33% more efficient than mine. But I am using my actual car and real figures, not estimated readings. So each kilowatt I buy at home, I pay 12p. That's the 11p plus 10%. And it takes me three miles, meaning I pay four pence for every mile I drive. Each kilowatt hour I buy out on the road at a Tesla supercharger costs me, well, it's different prices at different chargers and different times of the day and throughout the year, but currently it's averaging about 40p. That's 36 pence per kilowatt hour plus 10 pe 10%. Well, this means that I pay around 13 pence for every mile I drive, buying my electricity only at superchargers. And over the last year, I travelled more than 13,000 miles. I charged at home 67% of the time, at superchargers 29% of the time, and totally free, yeah, you can charge free with EVs, the other 4%. So in simple terms, rounding up, out of every 10 kilowatts hours I put in, I buy seven of them at home at 12p, and three of them at superchargers at 40p. Well, that equals an average of 20.4 pence per kilowatt hour, or just under 7 pence for every mile I drive. Well, that figure of 7p is using superchargers for 30% of my charging, 
because I do drive all over the country, I'm filming videos for the channel, so my mileage is higher than average, meaning that I do have to use public chargers. If I was just commuting locally and doing the average 8,000 miles a year, as quoted by the RAC, I would be able to do all my charging at home and the cost would be reduced to an absolutely ridiculous four pence per mile. Now for ICE cars, internal combustion engine that includes petrol or diesel. Well, this is a much simpler calculation, and I prefer to do it using the old fashioned miles per gallon rather than litres per 100 kilometres. A gallon is 4.55 litres, and as of today, the REC states the average price in the UK for a litre of petrol is 155.79, and diesel is 162.38. This makes petrol £7.18 a gallon and diesel £7.39 a gallon. Well, if my car runs on petrol and can do just 30 miles per gallon, then the cost per mile is 24 pence. If it does 40 miles a gallon, it's dropped to 18 pence. If it can do 50 miles a gallon, it's at 14 pence. And if it could do 60 miles per gallon average throughout the year, and that's a figure that's almost impossible to attain over an entire year, the cost is 12 pence a mile. So for diesel, figure's very similar, just a fraction dearer, about 4%, as the fuel is slightly dearer at present. So the first result, I actually do pay 7 pence a mile. The very best ICE car is 12 pence a mile, assuming it does 60 miles to the gallon, and most will be around 14 to 18 pence a mile. So my motoring is half price. If I only drove 8,000 miles a year, it would cost me less than one third of the price of petrol or diesel, even at 60 miles per gallon. Looked at another way, I would have to buy petrol or diesel for an ICE car at between 50 and 75 pence a litre to match what I currently pay with my EV and electricity, and I know of nowhere I can get petrol or diesel that cheap. So, first figures show that I can drive a very large, very high power saloon car for between half and a third of the price per mile of a diesel or petrol powered car. Well, a full charge for me at home, if I was totally flat and charged to totally full 82 kilowatt hours, it would cost me £9.84. Well, last time I filled up my wife's petrol car, I was in for a shock. It was near a £60. It's only a little run around. Yeah, I know that will drive much further, maybe 350, 400 mile, while I only get about 250 mile. But do the maths. £10 for 250 mile, or £60 for 400 You don't need a calculator to work that one out. Well, looking at today's domestic tariffs, I find that I could buy my off-peak electricity for as little as £7 per kilowatt hour with several utility companies. So why on earth do I continue to pay 11p? Well, the answer to that is there are two other things going on that most people don't take into account. First, the headline rate may not be the actual rate I pay. Well, let me explain. The 7p rate normally allows for just five or six hours overnight charging. Well, I often arrive back with just 15 or 20 mile of range left in the battery, and I always try to get home almost empty because charging at home is always ridiculously cheap. If I have to top up a public charges, I always only just add enough to get me home at the higher price so I can then top up fully at the cheaper price. Well, plugged into my home charger, I get 21 miles added for each hour my car is plugged in. So arriving with 20 mile left and with 10 hours overnight charging with EDF, I can add 210 miles overnight, which means my battery is very nearly full every morning, no matter how low it is when I get back at night. If I could only charge for five or six hours, I could only add maybe 100, 120 miles, plus the original 20 I got back with, that would equal 140, 150 miles. My battery would be only a little over half full each morning, meaning I would almost certainly have to stop at a public charger. 
and put in not only the few miles I need to get home, but also the hundred miles I was missing when I set off. And this would all be at the higher rate of 40 pence per kilowatt hour. So instead of 70% home charging, that ratio might go down to 50% or 40% or sometimes even lower. That would dramatically increase the average price per kilowatt hour that I would pay over the whole year. But the second reason has a far more powerful effect on my energy bill. You see, my house, like many others, is mostly empty during weekdays. It uses virtually no energy. My heating's off and it's only the fridge freezer working. When we, when we get back, there's only a few hours left at the peak rate, which finishes at nine o'clock. So we don't use the heavy hitters like electric shower, oven, washing machine or dishwasher during those three hours. Showers we take after nine o'clock in the evening or before seven o'clock on the weekdays. And we only ever use the dishwasher off peak. And now you get the final answer. You see, it's at 9pm Friday evening, my whole house drops to the off-peak rate of 11 pence and remains there until 7am Monday morning. So at the weekend, we are free to shower as much as we want, use the washing machine and dishwasher, use the oven for the weekend roast, all at 11p. The other tariffs do not use do this. If we use the washing machine with Eon or Scottish Power at the weekend, it would be at their peak rate. Well, doing this means that we hardly use any peak rate electricity at all, full stop. In fact, look at my actual statement for the last quarter, 2023, we used 1,048 kilowatt hours at peak rate and 6,024 kilowatt hours at off peak rate. Our daytime peak rate usage is a tiny 15% of my annual electricity usage, while off peak is obviously 85%. So let me put that into actual figures for you. Out of every 100 kilowatts of electricity we buy throughout the year from EDF, I can buy 15 kilowatts at the utterly ridiculous price of 39p, making £5.85, and the other 85% is bought at 11p. So 85 times 11p is £9.35. At £9.35 to £5.85, you get £15.20. Now, for those not following along closely, in plain English, I buy 100 kilowatt hours of electricity for £15.20. That equates to a tiny fraction over 15 pence per kilowatt hour throughout the whole year. My electricity supplied by EDF comes in, averaged over the year, 15 pence per kilowatt hour against a standard tariff of 30 pence per kilowatt hour. And I can find no other tariff that offers me this. Nowhere near. So if we combine the two factors, I, I can always leave the house with a full battery, charging at 11p, so buy much less from public charges, and I pay just 15 pence per kilowatt hour at home, average over the entire year. I have my utility and charging at an optimum low. The price I pay for my electricity, the price this is, not the kilowatt hours used, I actually pay almost spot on the average paid by the average person in the UK without an EV. I mean, plain English again, if I had a normal job and only charged at home, then on this tariff, I could run my EV absolutely, totally free. Now, I know the companies like Octopus offer cracking deals. Some afternoons, they, f they supply totally free electricity. But for me, it's not free. First, I'm not around most afternoons with my car plugged in. Nor do they give me the 100% free weekends from 9pm Friday to 7am Monday. That means I cannot get my demand down to 85p off-peak with anyone else, not even Octopus or Ovo. Now there will be some of you say, well, I can't be bothered. All that work just isn't worth it. I don't have the time. Well, you are so wrong. Just stop and think. 
I spent one afternoon four years ago choosing the very best tariff I could find for me at that time and allowing for my circumstances. And I have not done anything else for four years other than occasionally monitor it. Nothing at all. Zero. Zip. If you can't or won't spend a very little amount of time getting your ideal perfect tariff sorted out, then please continue to pay way over the odds. It's not my problem. Well, thanks for watching. I hope this has been useful and give you some ideas about lowering the cost of not just running your EV, but also your home. If you have liked this video, please click the like and subscribe. It makes such a huge difference to a small channel like mine. If you would like to contribute financially to allow me to visit more places more often and produce more videos, then please consider becoming a Patriot member. It's had a revamp, so from the 1st of November it will offer many benefits and bonuses besides the knowledge that you're helping me. I'm Dave.